Okay. Let me do one. Let me do one. See if I do one correctly. Wider grip. Yeah, slightly wider in your body. Let let get go completely. Go completely. Yeah. Now squeeze up. Good. Hang on. Stop. Stop. Hang on. I just stand up for a second. Good. That's the other thing I, I forgot to mention. If you're going to do this, if you flex, you see what Joe? He's flex his neck looking that way. Keep your eyes on the roof, right? Because that forces your center grid to tilt this way, so that no matter what you do, your 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 center of gravity is always directly underneath the bar. The minute you point your elbows forward, Joe, right now you swing forward your hip. So now is all the stress is on your elbow joint, right? So yeah. relax this, right? Yeah. Remember the sheet of glass. Look yeah. straight up and hang, hang, slide up the sheet of glass. Go. Good. Excellent. Don't grip it so hard. Hook it. There you go. Let go of your thumb. Good. Relax. Good. Much better. Look up. <laughs> Look up. <laughs> I'm slipping. <laughs> and, uh, Two more, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that was beautiful. You felt the muscle differently, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Now you felt your lats. Sure. Right? I did. Yeah. So paddling's like that. The minute, now you really feel your lats. So, you know, if you want to build strength really quickly, that. And, you know, um, that's the that's another tool I use because when I, you know, when I was doing cross, I'm also doing the strength training for Kona Aquatics. The kids, super kids are, I, 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 tell, I tell the kids the same thing. They have very fragile joints. So as far as I'm concerned, they're in the 60s. <laughs> yes? And I tell you guys the same thing. As far as you guys are concerned, I treat you like a 13 year old. Because your joints are fragile, right? So everything we do is uh, not, not, not hard. So, so when I talk to the parents, oh, what equipment do you need? I say, no, you don't need equipment. You need a stick, a yoga mat, and the ab roller. And those of you who email, I'll, 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 there are all these videos I've made already for you guys, right? So you know those old time those uh, the ab roller the, yeah. the one with the two wheels yeah. wheel, yeah. that is the most effective piece of equipment in the entire gym of any gym. Wow! If you think about it, you can go to Ross and buy for six ninety nine. Right? So I don't ex want you guys to do this. We we basically oh I do that. Anyway. The rest of my crew do something else. But I basically do an ab roller roll all the way out, come back, go all the way out, come back. I, I of course I should have brought one. I didn't, but um, the app roller is really good because if you think about when you roll out all the way, what I just did with Joe, right? You're doing a negative. Uh, let me go, a negative means you're resisting a force. A positive means you're exploding and pushing it, right? So what Joe did was the pull up is the positive. When you drop down, dropping his weight off is a negative. So in paddling, the positive is fast and the release is relaxed. Yes. Yes. Right? So in padding, mostly it's all positive. There's very little negative flex. Mm -hmm. Since you're not a bodybuilder, it works good for you. Right? Only bodybuilders do a lot of negative flex because they're trying to build bulk. Right? I'm trying to get lighter, not heavier. Because yeah. Bruce Ayama is just saying, Ian, get on the scale. <laughs> you know, you're getting too heavy. <laughs> Because you're heavy on the nose, it bounces the nose, right? But it's okay, we're both light on the nose and the tail. So when you're paddling, right, when you drive it down, you're basically doing the same thing. You're rolling out and contracting. So that's why I like the ab roller. And I always tell people, you can always start your knees, just roll out a little bit, but do not, this is, doesn't do anything. That's why when I watch people do planking, stuff like that, um, it's good for um, basic core work. But you guys are all motive athletes. I don't want anybody to do anything holding. And you're going to... different because when you're doing pull you're stretching your muscle one side and holding the other side so a lot of what I call stationary maneuvers I see you do that teaches your muscles to work slower again you're not you're not when you're a teenager you're super fast anyway that's fine but as what I call uh, senior athletes 
that's the opposite of what you want to do. You want to always keep moving smoothly and faster, not always slower. So that's why I like the ab roller because you know you should have somebody spot you. And I, I, I and this in my video because you you roll out your roll and you want to go down slow because if you drop just drop in, you're gonna rip something just like the push up. So a lot of people. They struggle and drop like that, right? And that's how you rip your shoulder out, elbows and and, and your your wrist. So it's the exact opposite. I want Joe. I want you to go up, go up fast and hold it and let it down slow. In terms of physiological response, is this better? Go up fast, and down slow. Because when you're paddling, the power face is fast and then right it's the same thing so you have to get your core to work the same way where the the positive is the explosive part the negative is your rest right so you guys want to get in the same motion everything we do the ab roller right as far as you can handle with your arms straight because look at what you do when you completely roll up look with this motion you're not just using your abdominals you're using what your lats, yes? Paddling is a, a, lat, a lat workout. So if you drop your elbows, just like in paddling, we talked about the third thing, you drop your elbows, then you're up just using the tricep. This is a small muscle. So if you paddle a small muscle, I mean, I know you guys are not necessarily racing, but you're, you're, you're not gonna win a race, not only that, you're, you're working the wrong system, right? So when you do your app roller, I, I, I always want you to, Make sure somebody spots you, right? Roll out to the point where you can handle and come back fast, but also come back fast. Because most of our contractions for, for throwing, jumping, is a fast contraction, right? Trust me, I'm slower now than I was 10 years ago. So I have to constantly work on how to keep being contracting faster without tearing anything. Most of the times we tear things because we throw our weight around. You do that in a canoe, the canoe is bumpy, jerky. As a stroker, you feel everything, everything behind, everybody behind you does the jerkiness, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm glad Joe brought up, this is an impromptu thing, that basic stuff. If you can handle just the pull-ups and the ab roller, I would say you cover 80% of all the critical areas that help your infrastructure, right? Every other piece of equipment in the gym is completely pointless, right? Legs, right? Legs, very important. In a canoe, you're using a lot of legs. It's all butt, quads, right? Um, I, again, I, I never, you know there's a gym machine, the leg extension, yes? Again, you're working your quads separate from the rest of your system. Christ, we don't do that in a canoe. You don't run like that either. So if you're gonna do anything, just do a basic squat, right? Just a basic squat, but with good form. I mean, you don't have to do a lot of weight, you know? What I try to do is do the squat on a bolster ball upside down. Man, you know? Well, actually, a kid will tell you that when we teach you how to surf, we make you, you know, bolster ball upside down? Okay, I should've brought this. I didn't know we were gonna do this contiguous, contiguous shot training. The, the, the first way to learn how to be softer in your joints, if you have a box to jump on, like, a, uh, like this chair here, right? right? You have to pretend all of you guys, because in the boat, you're doing the same thing. You want to be able to jump up, no sound. Jump down, no sound, right? You see people in gym doing box jumps like this. It's the most stupid thing you can do. Look at what you're doing here. You, you, you're hammering your joints for no reason. And in a canoe, you know we're pushing our legs, right? Yeah? It's a soft push. It's not... I'll tell you one thing. Um, I don't know if some of you guys know Kevin Rinkenbach. He's my neighbor. Um, he was the one who took me Pally, back in 2000 and a two man. And at that, that time, I mean, I know this now to be not right. I was paddling on a two man because I was fit then. He wanted me to be in a canoe with him. 
and he'll be behind me, trying to kick the canoe for his legs. I mean, he understood the concept, oh, I got push with a leg, but he was actually kicking the footwell for this every stroke. So I was like, what the hell is going on, right? <laughs> you know? So I told him, I said, you know, that, that can't be right. Because every time you jerk the canoe, if you swam like that, because I come from a swim background, if you swam like that, you're not going to make it. So that's, that's improper training because you're kicking the canoe. I want you to move the canoe, but it, it's really so. So your, your footwork has to be like that. So before you jump on the bosu ball, because the bosu ball is very unforgiving. Round bottom, fat side. So we do this, first we jump on the bosu ball, jump right off, jump on the bosu ball, jump right Two, three. Concentrate. Right up and do 20 of them. By the time you're done, <laughs> your legs are burning so bad it is more. more beautiful than any squats you can do and all you're doing is just your own body weight so I tell people you have no business moving any weight beyond your body weight you can even handle your body weight right and in a canoe let's think about this we do 10 we do 8 to 10 strokes per side right so I'm pushing my leg 8 8 per side switch over 8 to 10 strokes per side right so I give me time to recover on this side right so basically if you think about using what was that 15 strokes yeah right Nothing wrong with that, right? But the reason why we also do less strokes, not just because of rest and fatigue, because you, we have to have our change over forward, right? The reason why you do 15 strokes is because you try not to go to decelerate. Yes, I understand that thinking, but train sometimes with 10 strokes because every time you change it over, if you guys have crappy changeovers, you can get left behind, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. But elite crews, don't do that. We don't care about it. If you're gonna be on a crew, you better have a changer so fast that it doesn't matter what side you change. There's no delay. Because as a stroker, if the, somebody's late in your change, it just takes one person to mess up the whole boat, right? So it's good to train with, you know, put a little bit more intensity into eight or 10 strokes, but change over. But, you know, practice your change over at home. Again, back to the grip thing. You over grip it, you're gonna fumble your changeover. Go home, play with your paddle like this. Just learn to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, just learn to just. I mean, okay, this is a good paddle. This? <laughs> That's cheating. <G. laughs> I mean, I love this paddle. This is the kind of paddles we use for racing, right? I just got it out of the cabinet. Wow. This is part of a club paddle? $100 yeah. Chinese paddle. Holy crap. <laughs> wow, okay. So learn, 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 to, learn to do this quickly in front of the mirror, right? Learn how to grip it without looking, right? So that your changeovers are uh, 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 a lot. Actually, the best thing to do is watch TV and do this. Because now you have to do this peripherally, right? Yeah? And then grab like this. You know, learn how to grab like this, and then grab like this. Because we always change over like that, and then the next stroke like that, right? Yeah, is that what you guys are doing? Yeah. Yeah? Well, um, I got my, I got, you know, harassed so much because, you know, just because I was fast enough to catch it right away, change over, but that split second, I mean, like, we're really talking about one tenth of one second, you know, my students was on the end, just slowing the boat down. So when I change over, when I paddle, that's a change over, I quickly do one stroke. But the problem is when you grab, like, you think you're losing power on that stroke, right? So here comes the next one. This yeah. And the reason why I emphasize this is because part of aging gracefully, hand-eye coordination, neuro, you know, neurological training, right? This is actually the most important part. It's not how much strength you've got. It's the reflex action stuff, right? Um, I would say that my reflexes have slowed down quite a bit, but it's faster than most people in their 30s. Only because I only focus on, you know, that, like that jumping thing. So I don't care about the weight, I care about speed. And if you're in a canoe racing, you care about speed. 
right? And back to the thing. If you grip it too hard, it's impossible to move fast. So the harder you grip it, you're gonna have a tough time changing up because you're grinding it, right? Learn to paddle with really light hands. Your golf instructor will tell you something, you know? You know, you want a ball to go, you just let it be very relaxed in your grip, right? So paddling is gonna be the same way. So I think the, the people we missed on Thursday are all here, right? Yes? Yeah. Who didn't show up on Thursday? Okay, all right.